If you want to drink great filter coffee, why would you use something like this? An espresso machine? When you could use something like this, a Chemex or a V60, something that was made to make filter coffee. So for me, filter coffee was always a very large search space, whereas espresso, a little bit more straightforward in the technique, your hands-on technique, right? Whereas a pour over, your manual and physical dexterity seem to play a really big role in the quality of your resulting cup. Just to preface, Making filter strength coffee in espresso machines is not anything new. First, I personally heard about it was from espresso aficionado Discord members Shotwell, Bam, and Anarcho. And I think they were joking, or maybe they were serious, but a lot of people uh, last year were starting to make these longer ratio drinks with a very coarse grind, something like a V60 grind over a minute to two minutes. And I heard this resurfaced via Jonathan Gogni, who made his own version. And then most recently was Scott Rao's Filter 2.0 method or profile. And what Filter 2.0 is, as Scott Rao prescribes it, is basically a combination of bed prep and a special decent profile. So when it comes to bed prep, Scott Rao was recommending taking a a porta filter like this and using a paper filter in the bottom. You know, in more recent times, he started recommending Chemex filters, and that's what this is here, a Chemex filter that I've cut. And if you're curious about how to make these or how to obtain them, I'll, I'll leave a link to my how to make paper filters for espresso in the corner. Using this, you know, paper filter bottom, along with a coarser grind than espresso, but finer than a, a typical V60, Along with a special flow profile, you can make filter style coffee using an espresso machine. So when Scott first initially released this profile, he said that you could only make this coffee on a decent espresso machine. And that to me felt kind of unapproachable and a little unfair for everyone else that didn't have that amount of money to spend. I tried to make filter 2.0 style coffee using my uh, Slayer modded Rebel dual boiler. And in more recent times, I've been using this Flare 58 to make the same style of coffee. So today I just want to try to make some filter 2.0 on this Flare 58. And then I'll pull another shot on my decent espresso machine and we can compare the taste of those and maybe do a little bit of a triangle test to see if there's an appreciable difference between making a filter 2.0 on a Flare 58 versus a decent. And is it worth it to buy a decent just to make this particular drink? So today I'm drinking this coffee from uh, Cosmic Dust Roasters. Cosmic Dust is a female owned coffee roastery in San Jose, California. And this is a really nice fruity coffee, an anaerobic from Colombia. And I've been really enjoying this coffee as filter 2.0 because it is so fruity and juicy and sweet as filter coffee. So let's prep a puck for filter 2.0. I'll show you some of the differences between a filter 2.0 puck and, a, and an oral puck, and then we'll pull a couple shots and see if there's any difference between them. Okay, let's start with how to prep a puck for filter 2.0. So we wanna start with 16 grams of coffee, and Scott will recommend somewhere between 15 and 17 grams of coffee for a filter 2.0 shot. For my grinder, I'm gonna do a little RDT. And today I'm grinding at about a 200 micron burr gap. All right, so for puck prep, we start with a bottom filter. This is a Chemex bottom filter. And I'm just gonna saturate it and get it stuck onto the bottom of this basket and use a towel to absorb some moisture from the filter just so you can WDT without this filter moving around too much on you. So puck prep is very similar to any modern style of espresso that uses WDT. Just want to level out the grinds in your bed. That's looking pretty level. So we'll just temp it. You don't need to temp this too hard. You know, in earlier versions of filter 2.0, he recommended using a puck screen. Although recently he's recommended not using one for you know, reasons that I don't fully understand yet. But just for the sake of comparison, because my Flare 58 needs one, I'll use one in this particular shot. I've tried using them and not using them and the filter coffee I was getting from my decent was always delicious. So let's go ahead and pull a shot. Okay, so I've got this set up to pull Scott Rao's latest filter 2.0 profile. So why don't we give it a shot? Okay, so to pull a similar style shot on the Flare 58, I've got it preheated to about three lights. That's close to the temperature that Scott Rouse starts at. And I'm just going to fill the chamber, pull a little bit of water through about 10 grams into the cup, and we'll give it 90 seconds to bloom, and then we'll pull, pull the rest of the shot out. Gently pull about 
10 grams of liquid out, similar to how the decent would. And then we'll let it bloom for about 90 seconds. So it's been 90 seconds. So let's just slowly pull the rest of this water through until about 48 grams. And we're aiming for kind of a low flow rate here at about, you know, one ml a second or less. Just a nice gentle flow of water through the puck, kind of like a zero bypass pressurized trickleet, something like that, or maybe an AeroPress. A very gentle pull, not hardly putting any pressure on here at all. And once we get to 48, we'll stop the pull. We're at 48.4. So we pulled our two shots, and now why don't we test how they taste? Okay, so I've got these coffees here, and what we can do now is dilute them to filter strength. On the right, the decent, on the left, the flare. To dilute them, what I'll do is I'll just dilute them to a 1 to 14 ratio. So that's about 48 grams in. And I'll add water up until 224 grams. Oop, that's 230. So this other one, because I messed up pouring, I'll also pour it to 230. So this is the flare, 230. So what I'm diluting with is about 80 degrees Celsius. And just for fun, I thought what we could do is a triangle test. So this is more for me than it is for you. There's no way you can verify that I'm totally blinded. So under these cups, I have two marked flare and two marked decent. So I'm just gonna try to pour equal amounts of this coffee into these cups and the flare cups. And let's orient them so that they're centered. And I'm gonna spin, turn this around and spin it. And I guarantee you that I can't remember already which one is which uh, because I have dad brain have trouble remembering anything. And what I'll do now is I'll pull one of these off and reorient them and turn around and spin these again. Spinning them. We'll see if I can taste any difference between these cups and see if I can pull out which one is the odd one out. Okay, so let's give each of these a taste. Starting over here. So these two are tasting a lot more juicier. This one's a little bit more savory and I'm getting a little bit more kind of fermented notes coming from this one, which is something with an in an anaerobic you'd like to minimize. So generally with different profiles, different flow levels, different temperatures, you can accentuate or diminish certain flavor profiles and in anaerobics, I try my best to kind of get rid of that natural taste. So let's see if I was right. I have a mirror here so we can show you. This one is D for decent, this one F for flare, and this one F for flare. And this cup off camera, let's just verify another D for decent. So this is actually something that I've noticed in my past few attempts comparing the decent and the flare. Scott's profile tends to extract a little bit more heavily, more harshly in a way. Whereas with the flare, I can be very gentle with the pressure and I end up with cups that are a little bit brighter, a little bit fruitier. And whereas in the decent, I've been getting a little bit more nutty, more savory notes. In this particular one, I got a little bit more ferment than I'm used to coming out of the decent, but they're both delicious cups. They're both very clean. They both lack any sort of astringency and they don't have that espresso taste. So if you've ever had an Americano, and maybe I'll do a comparison in the future of an Americano versus a filter 2.0 and the taste differences between them. But espressos tend to have a little bit more of this kind of espresso high pressure taste. It's got a different taste, whereas a filter coffee is a little bit cleaner. So these are all very clean coffees. They're strong for filter because I've, I've diluted them to a one to 14 ratio. And I think filter tends to be one to 16, maybe one to 18. So they're a little bit strong for a filter coffee but they're all very delicious. If you have a Flare 58, or if you have any other flow or pressure profiling machine, give this filter 2.0 a try. I mean, it's really delicious. And especially if you don't like faffing about with pour in for your pour overs, but you do enjoy filter coffee and you have an espresso machine like this, it's definitely worth a shot. So you do not need a decent to make filter 2.0 coffee. And a filter 2.0 coffee is just a very clean coffee beverage made in an espresso machine and then diluted to filter strength. So what's really interesting is if you actually drink these filter 2.0 concentrates, they taste actually a lot like filter, but very, very strong. So I tend not to drink those concentrated just because you know, you get a very similar flavor profile uh, diluted and you can stretch it out over a longer period of time. I just want to show people that if you have a good understanding of espresso extraction theory, 
flow and pressure, then you don't need to use a very advanced machine to make advanced pressure profiles. And I think decent owners may say that, oh, you can't do other things like temperature profiling, or you could have dialed in that filter 2.0 profile differently. And that's true. That's always true. You can always modify any machine or optimize any machine. But you know, just downloading this profile as it is from Scott Rao, compared to an easy alternative for Flare 58, you're getting great coffee either way. And actually for this particular cup, I prefer the Flare 58. And that's not universally true. Sometimes if the coffee is perfectly dialed in for the decent, I, I, I tend to prefer that, prefer that one. But in this particular case, the Flare 58 was better. Thanks for listening and join me next time for more videos on espresso and flow and pressure and all sorts of fun things. Okay, so I've got this set up to pull a one to three ratio, filter 2.0. It's Scott Rao's latest profile, so let's give it a shot. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. No, don't do it. Oh, you.